In this video, we'll introduce the hash table, a simple but extremely useful data structure. Thus far in the course, we've seen a number of data structures for storing values. Contiguous data structures, arrays and vectors, support constant time lookup by index, but linear time search. Insertion and removal time depends on location. In general, they're linear. Linked lists improve on this by providing constant time insertion and removal, but search is still linear time. Search trees, of which we focused mainly on BSTs, provide logarithmic performance for insertion, removal, and search. In the C++ standard library, standard map and standard set are usually implemented as binary search trees. Search trees, including those used by the STL, are fundamentally ordered based on comparison. A node's place in a tree is determined by how its value, or in the case of nodes with both a key and a value, its key, compares to other nodes in the tree. This ordering is based entirely on a comparator, less than, greater than, student number is greater than, etc. The ordering can also be used to provide ordered traversal over the tree, whether over the entire tree or just portions of it. For example, please iterate over all of the students with student numbers between this one and that one in order of student number. This can be a very handy ability, but sometimes we don't really need ordering. Sometimes we just want to be able to insert, look up, and remove things as fast as possible. Can we make these operations any faster than logarithmic if we're willing to sacrifice ordering? Well, I'm glad you asked, and yes, we can. We can, in fact, get constant time performance if we don't need ordering. The hash table is a data structure that provides constant time insertion, lookup, and removal of elements that have two properties. They can be checked for equality, and each can be processed with a hash function to produce an integer hash code. This is a more complex requirement than for search trees, where only a comparator needs to be defined, but the benefits are worth it. Equality is what you would expect, a test of whether or not two values, or two keys, are the same. What's new is the hash function that produces a hash code. A hash table stores values in an array, but instead of adding each new element after the previous one, it is added at an index derived from the element's value. This index is the hash code produced by a hash function. A hash function calculates a hash code for an element. If we choose a good hash function, every value will hash to a different code. A very simple example of a hash function is one that distributes numbers across a hash table with n cells by computing x mod n for any given x. In this example, the number 407 hashes to 4, 218 hashes to 10, etc. So that's where we put these numbers in the table. If we want to look up 218 later, we compute the hash of 218, get the number 10, and go check that place in the table. If it's there, then we found it. Otherwise, it's not present. Note that, unlike a comparator-based data structure like a binary search tree, we can't find the next smallest or next largest value to the one we're looking for, but in many circumstances, we don't really need that information. In this simple example, then, adding, finding, or removing a value can be done in constant time. Not all uses of hash tables are quite that simple, however. In fact, few are. For example, say that we want to store some strings in a hash table, or equivalently, we want to store some key value pairs in a hash table where the keys are strings. Now say that we want to use this simple hash function. We take the first character of the string and subtract a from it, then calculate the remainder of that divided by 26 to ensure that non-alpha values won't hash to negative values, etc. We can store common names like Alex, David, and Heather quite straightforwardly. But what if we try to add an Andrew to the mix? In that case, we will encounter a hash collision, two different values hashed to the same index. Now, this example hash function is actually quite terrible. But even with a much better hash function, there will still be collisions. We need a strategy for resolving these collisions. One strategy for resolving hash collisions is chaining. Instead of storing a single element in each cell or bucket of the hash table, we store a list of elements. Then, if we encounter a collision, we just append the element to the appropriate list. The average length of these lists is the ratio of the number of elements in a hash table to the size of the table. This ratio is called the table's load factor, denoted lambda. If the hash function distributes the elements fairly evenly, we will usually have to traverse a list of lambda elements to find the one we're looking for. If our hash function doesn't do a good job, the situation could be much worse. Look at how many collisions the previous hash function would cause if we fed it one list of 200 popular baby names. Not only are there lots of collisions, some initials are much more collision-prone than others. 
A better example of a hash function for a string is shown here. It's still pretty simple to calculate, but it leads to a much more even distribution across the lists stored in the various hash buckets. This hash function is better because it takes all the letters in the names into account, but not every such hash function is necessarily good. For example, if we change the 17 in this hash function to a 13, here's the resulting distribution across hash buckets. It's even worse than only counting the first character of each name. This is because the hash tables of size 26 and the multiplier we used was 13, which are related by a simple multiple. To avoid this kind of relationship causing problems, we often choose a table size that is a prime number. Also, it's a good idea for a chaining hash table to keep a load factor of approximately 1. Higher than that and we need to do more iteration to find the right elements. Lower than that and we're wasting space that probably isn't required. Here's what our 200 baby name data looks like when slotted into a 211 cell hash table. The other major approach to collision resolution is probing. In this approach, we go back to just one element per cell and add a strategy of looking for alternate cells when we encounter a collision. Since we're now storing all elements directly in the hash table, a load factor of 1 is obviously not a good idea. Less than 0.5 is much better. The simplest probing strategy is linear probing. If we encounter a collision at cell H, we try H plus 1, H plus 2, etc. until we find an empty cell. This strategy is easy to implement, but if we end up with many collisions around a cell or a small range of cells, we may find that we get a clustering effect, in which H plus 1, H plus 2, etc. are already taken, and we have to do quite a lot of work to find an empty cell. Once we do, of course, we make life harder for the next attempt to find a cell for an element that hashes to a similar value. A slight improvement can be found with quadratic probing. As the name implies, after a collision, this strategy looks for empty cells at cell H plus 1, H plus 4, H plus 9, H plus 16, etc. All mod n, of course. It's also possible to apply a second hash function to calculate offsets to alternate cells, but in practice, quadratic hashing does the trick, as long as the load factor is less than 0.5. That's a brief introduction to hash tables, hash functions, hash codes, and two forms of collision resolution, chaining and probing. We'll play with these ideas in our in-class exercises.